Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Anthony Andre, and I lead the Franchise Business Unit here at Pandalogic. Uh, Pandalogic is a programmatic recruitment and conversational AI platform that uses artificial intelligence and machine learning to help franchises source, qualify, and engage candidates. Uh, our goal is to help you streamline and optimize your recruitment efforts. We market your jobs to the right candidate audiences at the right time uh, and work to generate applications at the lowest possible uh, cost. Uh, the foundation of our product is data, uh, and we understand how important it is to understand the trends happening in the economy and the labor market when planning your business goals, those including recruitment and hiring. And that's why we're so excited to sponsor this report and join you on this webinar today. Uh, to kick off today's webinar, it's my honor uh, to introduce Matt Haller, the president and CEO of the International Franchise Association. Right, thank you so much, Anthony, appreciate it. Good to uh, have so many franchising friends here to join us for this uh, webinar today. Uh, we had a great release last week, uh, a lot of media coverage uh, of the report and thanks so many uh, in the industry for sharing the data. Um, so we'll, Daryl and I will run through uh, some of the, some slides here and then we look forward to a back and forth question and answer session. So uh, this report uh, we've produced annually um, it is basically a report um, looking at the performance over the past year for the franchising sector, uh, as well as a projected economic outlook for the year ahead. Um, one of the things we've added uh, in the last two years is an in-depth look uh, at all 50 states uh, in Washington, D.C. in terms of how franchising will perform at the state level, uh, as well as within regions, and in-depth uh, looks at the major sectors where franchising uh, is concentrated. Uh, the report uh, reveals that last year franchising continued to drive the economic recovery and rebounded 16% um, from the previous year, obviously uh, still coming out of the impact of the pandemic. Um, this year, uh, I think it should come as no surprise to you all that 2022 um, was a year of more moderate growth, uh, and that trend will continue again uh, into 2023. Uh, this is noteworthy because franchising uh, it does continue to grow um, despite the many uh, economic challenges uh, that we are facing as a sector, uh, whether it's inflation or the labor shortage uh, and ongoing supply chain issues, um, which are infecting nearly all franchise businesses. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about how we're faring uh, and some of the research that Daryl and his team have done for us on, on those issues vis-a-vis uh, -vis non franchise businesses, which is important to, to keep in mind. Uh, According to Fran Data's uh, and IFA's inflation survey in September, 90% uh, of franchisees are experiencing uh, a moderate to substantial impact from inflation. Uh, and according to our second uh, annual labor survey that we released last month, 87% of franchisors report that their franchisees have had difficulty filling jobs uh, for unskilled labor, skilled labor, or both. Uh, so it's clear that uh, the sector, the franchise sector, is not immune to all these um, macroeconomic challenges, uh, but these studies that we've done, along with this report um, that we've just released, uh, shows that the franchise model and franchises are better insulated uh, due to the size and scale and the network of support that they have by being part of a franchise system um, to address some of these economic pressures. Um, and of course, franchising continues to grow at a moderate pace, uh, it creates more good paying jobs uh, than similarly situated non-franchise businesses uh, and franchisees continue to give back in major ways to their local communities. Uh, so just to hit the, the, the top lines, uh, our report shows that um, we project an additional 15,000 establishments um, to be created uh, in 2023. Uh, this will bring the total amount of employment uh, in, uh, excuse me, the total number of franchise establishments to 805,000 uh, in the U.S. Um, these businesses will create an additional, those 15,000 new franchise businesses will create an additional 254,000 uh, new jobs, uh, bringing the total number of U.S. franchise employment to 8.7 million. Uh, that's direct employees. Uh, and franchises are projected uh, to produce $860.1 billion in economic output in 2023. And that's a 4.2% increase uh, over 2022. Uh, 
Um, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, uh, the report also looks at the individual sectors uh, and predicts that service-based industries and, and specifically quick service restaurants will see the most growth uh, in 2023. Um, and uh, the real estate sector will face the most significant challenges uh, in uh, of the eight uh, broad sectors that we look at uh, in the report. Obviously, um, mortgage rates uh, are impacting um, the real estate industry um, significantly, as well as uh, access to capital um, and, and other factors. Um, one of the things that report also does uh, is it dives into ways that um, businesses continue to adapt um, to consumer trends, uh, such as uh, in-store purchases and an online presence, digital insights, consumer and brand loyalty, and technology and efficiency. Um, additionally, uh, the report touches on, um, although I can speak to it um, more specifically, uh, I mentioned some of the macroeconomic factors, but there are, of course, a number of policy issues that do uh, uh -huh. potentially put a lot of this progress and development and growth uh, at risk. And those are things that your involvement in the IFA is, of course, critical to ensuring that uh, these risks do not come to uh, reality. Uh, they are uh, at the federal level issues like the joint employer rule, which the National Labor Relations Board uh, is continuing to uh, pursue and is expected to release a final rule uh, in August. Uh, we have uh, a number of things swirling at the Federal Trade Commission, uh, including a recently released uh, so-called request for information, which could lead to uh, a future rule governing the franchise relationship. Um, this is uh, a process that's taking place outside the FTC's review of the franchise disclosure uh, document and the franchise rule. Uh, they're also looking at uh, issues surrounding um, the non-compete um, issues um, and a proposed rule there. Uh, we're also watching closely um, and engaging directly on um, the Julie Sue nomination. Uh, she has been uh, nominated to serve as Secretary of Labor. Uh, obviously, a number of issues the Labor Department um, not just in this administration, but in the last two, have impacted the franchise model's ability to grow. Uh, so we are increasingly in the people business, um, in our advocacy, um, people of course make policy. And then lastly, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention a number of the issues uh, at the state level that impact the franchise model, where IFA is directly uh, engaged, uh, particularly in the state of California, around the FAST Act, um, as well as uh, the newly proposed AB 1228, which is uh, creating a joint employer relationship for uh, our restaurant companies, uh, many of our restaurant companies in, in California. Uh, and then lastly, a few franchise relationship bills that are uh, currently being considered in places like Arizona, uh, Arkansas, and New Jersey. So all these things do have the potential to impact uh, the sector's uh, growth and uh, to dive deeper into the data. And thank you, Daryl, and your amazing team at Fran Data. Uh, I will turn it over to you to provide more details of the report. Thanks, Matt. Uh, those are a lot of headwinds that you just described. And with that, would you expect that this is the year that franchising would have a record number of new brands show up? Resilient, opportunistic, that's the hallmark of the franchise business model. And it's really showing itself this year uh, in how strong it is, how resilient it has been, uh, and how opportunistic the business model is. Uh, before I launch into some of the numbers, I would like to uh, thank uh, IFA. Uh, Frandate and IFA have had a, a partnership in doing uh, this uh, type of uh, information gathering and reporting to the franchise community. And providing this level of detailed information is, uh, is rare in any kind of a, a business sector, uh, let alone 220 business sectors of the US economy. But from that, we have such a rich amount of information that allows us to look back decades, uh, understand how the overlay of the economic trends, uh, how the economy behavior is, and how the franchise model responds to those trends. As I said, 
we're having a record year for new brands and that we're, we're uh, projecting that's going to happen this year. And that just reinforces the strength of the business model. Now, there are a couple things that I would highlight that are, that are more current components of the Outlook report. But for the Outlook report overall, um, the numbers that Matt just said, the uh, highlighting of a couple of the key um, overall data points showing the strength of the business model, uh, I think is reinforced there. We had one uh, slight reduction in uh, unit growth, um, an actual contraction in 2020. It's the first time that we have seen that happen in decades through recession after recession, through crisis after crisis, through all of the challenges that, that show up in different sectors of the economy. Uh, yet the franchise business model has, has proven itself to be quite resilient, quite strong, and certainly quite opportunistic. Next slide. What I'll highlight here are a couple of the underlying um, factors that are influencing more recent trends uh, that we're aware of. And the question is, how is it affecting the franchise business model? Well, franchisors and franchisees typically use economic downturns and weakening economies to address inefficiencies. And we saw that during the uh, during and after the uh, great financial crisis. Uh, we saw that at the beginning of the pandemic. And now with inflation fighting by the Fed and uh, unintended consequence of a banking upheaval, we're seeing that again. And those efficiencies that franchising brings about in normal times move very slowly and evolve very gradually as we saw in, um, for about the last 10 or 12 years. Uh, but it's really accelerated now. It's accelerated in areas that uh, start to show up first in the way of consolidation, where weaker performing operators are acquired by larger, stronger operators. And in franchising, that trend that we're starting to see pick up pace and is uh, reflected to some degree in the uh, uh, Outlook report uh, is seeing multi-unit operators get some of the underperforming units, franchisors looking at inefficiencies, bringing things like AI into the equation where years, 10, five years ago, we wouldn't be seeing much of that. It would be very evolutionary. And now it's much more dramatic because they're forced into taking actions in some cases. And those actions tend to lead to a lot of new innovation, a lot of new brands, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, uh, and a lot of change that, that otherwise would take years to happen and it's now being uh, compressed and accelerated. One of the things that I would highlight for you on the current numbers that we're looking at here is the, the um, impact that uh, the financing landscape is changing and what that might mean in uh, the ability for you to continue to expand and execute uh, under your uh, strategic plans. Next slide, please. Uh, two things I would highlight up until about three months ago, labor was front and center as the biggest issue that was holding franchising back from uh, growing. Uh, it was the biggest challenge that we heard uh, consistently from franchisees. Matt alluded to that a couple of minutes ago. Uh, and we did a joint survey with IFA to understand just how big of an impact that was having on businesses. And the uh, answer to that is that almost 90% of all franchise businesses were facing the challenge of labor, not only on the uh, unskilled side, but on the skilled side as well. Uh, and that was constraining growth. It was impacting the ability to uh, do the things that, that uh, the franchise business model otherwise would be allowed to do. Uh, store level wages were increasing, so we're seeing uh, considerable pressure on uh, margins, and those combined are having a, a, a tampening down effect on the growth forecast that's in the economic outlook report. Coming more recently, though, uh, well, before I go on, I would highlight that with all of this, as in the case in the, even in the worst days of uh, past downturns, Franchising does pretty well. We're going to add a 
quarter million employees, a quarter million jobs this year to the franchise business model across the country. That's a big number. Uh, and that is part of the contribution to the overall economic performance that franchising has come to be known for. Next slide, please. Franchising has three legs, a franchisor, a franchisee, and a capital provider on the side that, that provides the capital to grow. And over the last 10 years, the capital provider has not been much of an issue. And in fact, with uh, interest rates that had been so low for so long, it, it was a very uh, minimal problem for most franchise brands uh, in gaining access to the capital that they need. Well, one of the unintended consequences of Fed actions to fight the inflation has been a, a liquidity issue for uh, regional and smaller banks. The vast majority of capital funding for franchising comes from regional and smaller banks. So I would highlight that um, as franchising looks to execute their business model this year and next year, they should be paying closer attention to that capital side of things in order to meet the growth estimates that we're projecting here uh, for both 2023 and well into 2024. It's something that franchisors especially need to pay attention to and that diversification of lending sources is going to be a necessity as we go into the second half of this year. Next slide, please. Growth by sector. Matt mentioned that QSR and uh, personal services, the magnitude of the growth here. We're talking about tens of thousands of businesses, of jobs uh, that are impacted by the growth that this reflects. Uh, and as long as the consumer stays relatively healthy, I think we're going to see a continuation of this growth and a little bit biased towards uh, a, a growth, a further growth in personal services, which we've seen over the last half dozen years, uh, but also in QSR, which um, given the, uh, the many changes that are being brought about through technology, through um, different forms and applications and creativity on the part of uh, the food industry uh, is leading to a, a whole new wave of, of uh, creating demand uh, for different products and services. Uh, one thing I would mention from the uh, growth standpoint, uh, when, when we encounter economic headwinds as we currently have, and following from a pandemic into inflation, into labor issues, into now potentially banking issues, that combination typically forces the most creative new innovations that we see in franchising and in business in general. Uh, and our sponsor for today, uh, representing uh, AI applications in HR is an example of that. You wouldn't be talking about that five years ago, but today it's, uh, it's not just a curiosity, it's a, a way of, of considering uh, growth and expansion on a more efficient basis because margins are being squeezed by inflation, by labor costs, by rising capital costs. And that combination of things drives innovation. And it's part of the reason we're seeing so many new brands come up. Next slide, please. The final slide I will discuss that comes out of the economic outlook, there's, there's state level information in the report, there's sector level information in the report, and all of that is rolled up into an understanding of, of the types of brands, the uh, jobs, the uh, where, where growth is stronger and where growth is weaker. Uh, one could look at this particular slide and say, well, this maybe has a bit of a political overtone. Uh, I would caution you not to think of it that way. Franchising is opportunistic. And if you look at where the demographics, where the, the pattern of growth and the demand for certain kinds of services is evolving, this is what you get from the franchising business model evaluation. They're going where they see the, the shift in demographics driving the greatest demand. And that's what we're seeing here. So while it, it may have some uh, potential for 
uh, interpretation for political reasons. It's a far stronger interpretation just simply where the uh, economic uh, uh, growth is perceived to be greatest uh, and where the demographic pattern shifts are perceived to align the most with particular brands. With that, I'm gonna turn it back to Bill and we can follow up uh, with questions in a few minutes. Thank you very, very much, Daryl. Um, just a point of order for all the folks on the call today. Following the call, we'll uh, circulate a copy of the call as well as the slide deck uh, for your further uh, consideration and use. Uh, for those of you who have questions, uh, please feel free to add them to the chat box, uh, including your name and company name so we can give you proper attribution. Uh, and I will ask those on your behalf here in the next few minutes. But before we get to attendee questions, our first question goes to Anthony Andre. Anthony, please Thank, go ahead. Uh, Thank you. Um, obviously, as, as the uh, IFA Fran data research shows, we've seen franchise brands and franchisees invest in AI uh, for various business needs like customer facing solutions, inventory management, future sales forecasting, et cetera. You know, and at the same time, we, we know that the majority of franchise businesses see acquiring and keeping labor or talent as a persistent hurdle to growth. Where, where do you folks on the a panel see the industry moving in terms of AI and other technology to address staffing and employment predictability as we're projecting to continue to see volatile employment market conditions moving forward? I, th I think you might be muted. Still. Yeah, you're on mute. Here we go. It's two years into this pandemic, and I still haven't reminded myself to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think anything that's going to create more predictability uh, and reduce costs uh, at the franchisor level uh, or provide tools and resources to help franchisees reduce costs um, and create more predictability and profitability is, is valuable. So I think there's... The, you know, I, I think to the extent technology can help um, there, uh, and specifically artificial intelligence can help there, I think that's that's great. I will say that it, there's no replacement for actual labor um, in many, you know, high intensity uh, service related businesses. Um, so while it's something that many of our brands are, are certainly looking at, um, particularly given the myriad challenges that are out there, whether it's cost of labor, availability of labor, uh, or you know, regulations that make it harder to to operate um, in a labor intensive business, I, I still continue to hear from so many of our members that uh, you know they, that customers still want to deal with people um, in in many of these uh, situations, particularly uh, in the hospitality industry. So there's no one size fits all, you know, in franchising. They were so diverse, but I, I think that. Um, there is a there is a place for it um, in many ways. I don't know, Daryl, if you want to add anything. Well, let me just add the following: if if those damn millennials and Gen Z people were more predictable and would follow a script properly, it would be fairly straightforward, and we wouldn't need a lot of technology to try and solve many of the issues that we're trying to solve today. The issue that we face as a franchise community is they don't follow the script like they're supposed to. They're much more uh, uh, dynamic and harder to under, uh, understand. And because of that, technology has a real opening to enter into that fray of trying to understand consumers, understand employees, understand needs, wants. Uh, and the pattern of change that that is reflected in it. So I think there's there's definitely a growing opportunity for it. And as we are seeing because of the downturns that I made uh, reference to earlier, you get the most willingness to create disruptive applications during periods where there's the most stress being felt. And that's what we're seeing right now. So thank you for the question, Anthony. We have quite a few good questions here in the chat box. Again, for our attendees, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat box with your name and company. Uh, first question here in the chat comes from uh, Tom Porterfield of Abacus CPAs. Uh, his question is that it seems that all of a sudden, states big and small, red and blue, have introduced anti-franchise legislation. 
Can we expect to see this to be the new norm? And how can the industry get ahead of this so that anti-franchise legislation doesn't materialize in state legislation? Matt, that seems like a perfect question for you. Well, thanks for the question. Uh, we certainly are taking incoming uh, from many different places. Um, look, I think the best way to solve some of these issues is from within, right? So some of the things that we're seeing inside some of these states on franchise relationship issues are you know, a function of franchisees who may be less happy with their franchisor at the present time. You know, that's generally solved by uh, selecting the right franchisees on the front end uh, and as changes to the franchise system are required uh, because customers demand them and franchisors want to make improvements, bringing your franchisees along um, so that they're not, you know, bent out of shape uh, and go, going and running to the legislatures, you know, saying that they're getting screwed by their franchisor. Um, I think that we certainly, uh, so those are the, the the threats internally, right? And I think we're, we're, we're just having to deal with those, uh, you know, as they come. Uh, the external threats, the things like the joint employer rule or uh, the state of California uh, with the FAST Act and, and other things, these are driven, you know, really because we're so successful um, and we're growing at such an accelerated rate um, and more largely driven by organized labor, seeing us as uh, an area where they see opportunity to grow market share uh, in terms of who they'd like to represent. Um, so that's that's a totally different ball of wax. And uh, I think there we just need to continue to present a united front that uh, what what these laws uh, or bills would would do to franchising uh, actually is going to harm not just franchisors or franchisees, but also the very employees that these proponents uh, are seeking to help. And we've done that with data um, and we do that with stories um, that show that franchisees pay their employees higher wages than non-franchise businesses already. We don't need a third party uh, to uh, the arrangement. So, um, you know, all of this also gets, you know, solved by having friends before you need them. Um, and that's a big reason why we've engaged in this open for opportunity campaign to build allies in the political community um, and educate reporters and other organizations about the benefits of the franchise model so that we have more voices that can be lobbying um, and advocating uh, in support of franchising. Uh, and understand the value of franchising before we really need to go into some of these battles. Thank you, Matt. Uh, our next question I will pass to Daryl. It comes from Jim McElhenney of FranNet. Uh, Daryl, any insights on what is driving the growth rate in Illinois? Everything we read suggests Illinois <laughs> has been a net sender of population. Um, I, I wish I had the... Uh the depth of knowledge of each of the states and the businesses that are um, active in those states. And unfortunately, you're asking me a question that I would ask, have to turn to my research team to be able to answer. Uh, I, I can't give you a straightforward answer to what's going on in Illinois, unfortunately, sorry. Be happy if you wanted to follow up with me uh, offline. Uh, I'll uh, ask somebody on the research team to uh, to respond to you so that we can give you an accurate answer. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, I'll make sure to connect to everybody. Um, our next question comes from uh, Larissa Walega from Zybart International. Uh, Larissa asks, as we see so many layoffs in tech, automotive, et cetera, uh, do you have any thoughts on this audience coming to purchase a franchise? What we have seen in the pattern of, of uh, economic cycles, if you overlay franchising with the economic cycle, franchising is a, an earlier slowing down of activity uh, during the early stages of a downturn. And it's a more rapid acceleration of growth coming out of uh, a downturn. We're still in the position today from an economic standpoint of trying to determine whether we actually have a downturn or not. I think each of you could answer that question from your own uh, economic lens of experience. Uh, but I think overall, the, the typical pattern is once you start seeing uh, an increase in an un unemployment, and that reaches into the middle management side of things, you, you tend to see an uptick on 
uh, franchise activity. And then that builds its own momentum coming out of a, a downturn. Uh, so the answer should be, yes, we should see that, but it, we're probably in a, a fairly early phase of that cycle down before the, uh, that starts to turn. And we see that uh, show up significantly in the numbers. You. I have one more question here in the chat box. I'll just offer to all those on the call, should you have a question, please drop it into the chat, including your name and company, so I can be sure to ask the experts. Um, Daryl, I think this one goes to you. It is from Paul Hayes of Clifton Larson Allen. Uh, do you foresee financing opening up for Zors uh, more than in the past? From Zors, more than. Yeah, I, I, I... If I'm interpreting the question correctly, it's it's uh, do you see franchise or financing programs become a more significant factor uh, in franchising given the uh, uh, uncertainty in the banking community? Uh, I I think the answer to that is uh, unlikely. Uh, the reason being that business financing is uh, requires a set of capabilities and it requires experience and knowledge. And franchisors, while there are some that have run very successful franchising programs, most have not when they've entered into it. So the, the desire to try and supplement uh, what the banking community is, is out there and skilled at doing uh, generally is not the, the preferred um, path that we would certainly advocate for most franchisors. What really does make more sense is to position the brand from a lender perspective so that the understanding of what the really inherent credit risks are in your franchise system are clear to them. Because we're now dealing with a period where the banking community is, has greater uncertainty and therefore their credit boxes are tightening. And they will continue to tighten until it's clear to them that the path is starting to ease up again and, and grow again. I mentioned earlier that the majority of franchise financing is done by regional and smaller banks. Now, you would be better served by reaching out to a few more of those regional and smaller banks to uh, diversify your portfolio of potential uh, sources of capital and be positioned not to just talk to them about how great your brand is from a marketing and using your marketing materials, but think of it from their perspective and understand the credit risks, the, the, um, um, your fund score. Know what, where you stand so when you're having that conversation with them, you can talk to them on their level. It's a great uh, non-advertisement advertisement for uh, one of Frandata's primary products. Thank you, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I was hesitant to even mention there you that. You go there, just I, I think you know, in light of uh, where we are in the uh, in, in in now the banking cycle, it's it's probably prudent to at least uh, uh, increase the awareness of it, Matt. So I did. Daryl and Matt, we have somewhat of a follow up question here from Jennifer uh, Weideman, Director of Franchise Development for ATC Healthcare Services. Uh, Jennifer asks. What are your recommended or preferred national financing resources for non-SBA loans? Um, that's, I think, a, a, it, it, the answer to that is typically twofold. One is there are in, in certain sectors, the commercial lenders have their own specialty lending group that's focused on that particular sector. They may only deal with a handful of brands, but at least they, they have some specialty knowledge of how that sector functions, hotels. Um, full service restaurants. There are certain areas where they, they do have some expertise. And so on in, in, if you're in a sector uh, and the ATC healthcare services, I, I would have to ask my uh, 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 lending team um, where there may be some specialized commercial lenders in that space. So that's one option. The other um, option is that um, in, in most areas, if it's non-SBA, the commercial lending, if it doesn't have a specialty lending group, is very um, 
diverse, it's very split, spread across. So the, that local bank may be willing to do a commercial loan to that business, almost irrespective of the, the um, uh, industry that it's in. And so there's, there's kind of a, a bifurcated group of, of lenders that you would, could look at. Once again, be happy to talk to you offline about that if that would be helpful. Uh, I wish I could give you a nice clean answer to that, but the, um, um, the environment we're in in the banking community right now and, and heading into uh, is going to create a lot of shifting of how that, that uh, landscape looks for the next six to 12 months at the very least. Final questions? Going once, going twice, <laughs> three times. Okay, with that, I'd like to pass the floor back to Anthony Andre of Pando Logic. And uh, before he takes the floor, I do want to thank each and every one of you for taking your time to join this call today. Following the call, we'll share the slide deck, the presentation, and the recording uh, with all registrants and attendees. So thank you so very much for joining. Anthony, please take it away. Thank you, Bill. You know, as first of all, really interesting information today. Thank you for the, the breadth and depth. Um, as we've all heard, there, there continues to be a, a lot of uncertainty in the economy and the labor market, but uh, franchise industry remains strong. Quarter million uh, job growth projected for 2023, growing at 3% from a staffing perspective that doesn't necessarily reflect the turnover replacement hire requirement that all of you face. Um, according to the, the I, IFA Fran Data Labor Survey, 81% experience growth constraints due to labor challenges. You know, Pando Logic is here to help you try to overcome these challenges. We can bring predictability to the uncertainty of the labor market uh, by using our advanced AI technology to predict future recruitment outcomes and determine with precision how to allocate your spend to drive faster and more cost-effective results. Uh, our teams work closely with you to take the time to understand your business, pairs your hiring objectives and data with a uh, decade of applicant and source data for your markets to make the most appropriate budget allocations in real time on the right job sites. Uh, by combining our real-time market data, advanced AI and machine learning and consultation from our team, Pando Logic helps franchises of all sizes streamline their hiring process and respond to external market changes in real time. Thanks very much for joining us today. We appreciate the time you've spent with us and we wish you all success in the remainder of 23. Thanks so much. That concludes our Franchising Economic Outlook Report for 2023. We will be sharing everything very shortly. Thank you much for your time, and please do follow up with questions. Have a wonderful day.